Hi everybody, Physics Ninja. Today what we're going to do is look at how do you calculate the moment of inertia of an annulus ring. So this ring here is shown in the figure. It has a height H, it has an inner radius R1, an outer radius R2, and a uniform mass distribution. The total mass of the ring is uppercase M. All right, I wanna show you two different ways to do this calculation. The first one is just applying our definition of moment of inertia and evaluating the integral over the volume. Okay, so how would you apply that to this problem? Uh, in this case, this is pretty easy to do. Uh, the second method which I wanna show you has to do with finding the moment of inertia of objects with holes. So this is really nothing more than a cylinder with a hole in the middle, right? So I made previous videos where I showed you guys tricks on how do you calculate the moment of inertia of an object with a hole. I wanna show you how do you do it for this problem over here. I had a comment come up recently on my other video saying that it didn't work. So this is to show you that it does work. You just gotta be careful on how you apply it. All right, again, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and leave any comments or questions down uh, below, and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Let's do this. All right, so the first method I'm gonna use is integration. Uh, here's the formula. So I have to integrate over the entire volume. And again, I said that the density was uniform. So the density, I can write as the mass, total mass of the ring uh, divided by the volume. Okay, and this again is since you can also write it as dm over dv. So we're going to turn this integral here into a volume integral. Uh, let's first write the density though in terms of the properties of this ring. So the mass is okay, we have the total mass of the ring. What about the volume? Think about the volume for a minute. Uh, when you construct a ring like this, you can think about it as it being a cylinder of radius R2, and then I remove the inner section, so I remove an inside cylinder. So it's really kind of like the volume of a big cylinder with a radius R2, so that would be the area, pi R squared, and it's R2 squared multiplied by the height. And then what you do is you remove the inside part, and then you're left with just the ring. So the inside part would have a volume, again, it's a cylinder, except now the radius is different, all right? And it's still multiplied by the same height. So I'm just going to rewrite this, just factor out the terms that are common. I'll write the pi over here, r2 squared minus r1 squared, and all this multiplied by the height. All right, there's the volume. So right away now you can write my density as the mass, total mass, divided by the total volume, the expression that I just solved for right here. I'll just rewrite it, it just takes a second. All right. So, so far, so good. Now let's go back to the integral that we want to solve. Again, what we're trying to solve here is an integral over a total volume, R squared, and now I'm gonna replace this element of mass. And you can see from my equation over here, the element of mass dm, I can replace that as the density multiplied by an element of volume. Okay, so we're gonna use that and substitute that right here for our expression. So it's the density, which is constant, so really that'll be taken out of the integral in just a minute, and integrate over the entire volume. All right, so I'm gonna start off by factoring out the constant terms. So the moment of inertia is the density can be taken out, it's uniform. And now we're simply left with an integral over the volume of r squared. All right, dv, and that's it, okay. Now we gotta take this step a little bit further. So a volume integral is really integrating over three different coordinates. Now, just because of the symmetry of this, it's probably best to use cylindrical coordinates. The way we do that is pretty straightforward. Let's just go ahead and replace that one volume integral with three, right? We're going to um, integrate over the height. That's gonna go from zero to h. We're gonna integrate the angle from zero to two pi and we're gonna integrate the radius from R1 all the way to R2. All right, and what are we integrating? Well, we're integrating the variable or the function R squared. That's our definition of moment of inertia. And then we have to introduce this element of volume. So for cylindrical coordinates, the volume element uh, looks like this. It looks like R dr. This is always the same for cylindrical coordinates, d phi. Um, and then the last one here would be dz. Okay, um, so this guy here is the volume element dv for cylindrical coordinates. All right, so some of these integrals are pretty straightforward. 
For example, the integration over the height, it only involves dz and it's going from zero to h. There's no other z term over here. So that makes this integral pretty straightforward. That means that this answer here is simply equal to the height. What else? The integral over the angle phi, again, you're integrating over all angles here in the plane. Uh, this guy's also straightforward. It's only equal to two pi because there's no other function that has phi in it. So really the only one that's a little bit complicated is the integration over the radius. So let me first finish both of those. So we're gonna have, this is the density. All right, our integration over the height is simply h. Our integration over uh, the angle is going to be two pi. And now let's rewrite the integration over uh, the radius. Let me just move this down a little bit. I can see I'm gonna run out of space. So I wanna keep it nice and neat. And now we're still going to integrate from the inner radius to the outer radius. And we're integrating which function? So there's r squared here, which comes from the definition of moment of inertia, multiplied by r, which is r cubed. And then I'm left with dr. All right, we're actually almost done now. This is just a nice kind of function. This is very easy to integrate. So we're left with rho, this, uh, 2 pi, put a bracket around that one, and this integral is simply r4 over 4. And again, this goes between the limits of r1 and r2. All right, when you substitute our functions in here, or the value of the radius, uh, what you end up getting now is our density multiplied by the height, multiplied by 2 pi. I'm going to take the 4 out, and put the 4 right here down at the bottom, and here I'm going to be left with, I put a nice square bracket around this one, um, r2 squared, uh, r2 to the fourth power, rather, minus r1 to the fourth power. Okay. Now this doesn't look like the expression I had previously written. However, you have to notice that this here is a difference of squares. Okay, right here, both of those terms, which means you can write this slightly differently. You can... Let's start simplifying this also. We have a two here and we have a four. So I'm gonna write it like that. So at the end I have my one half term, I have my density, I have my height, and I can write the square bracket in terms of two terms because it's a difference of squares. All right, something like this. And it also needs to be multiplied by the same two terms except now there's a plus sign in between. You can see that both of this, the term in the square bracket, equals the multiplication of both of these terms. And the final step now is I have to go back and remember how the density is. What I want to do is I want to write the moment of inertia in terms of the mass. You can see that once I substitute this guy right here, a lot of the terms are going to cancel out. First of all, I am going to have, I'm missing a pi factor here. What happened to my pi? Let's put it here. Oh, I'm sorry about that. It was still left over here. Um, you see the pi is going to cancel out. The height is going to cancel out. Actually, even this term here, right, which involves both radius is also going to cancel out. So be a little bit careful when you substitute this in, but there's a lot of simplifications that come in. And at the end, you're left with this one half. The mass is not going to cancel out. And all of the terms in the denominator here, they're all going to vanish, which means you're still left at the end of the day with this one, R1 squared. Okay, this is the moment of inertia of an annulus ring right here. And those are kind of all the steps. Hopefully everything makes sense to you. Okay? Maybe add in an extra step of substituting the density to show your work, but you should get to this value. All right, I'm gonna show you another method now to do this problem. The second method I'm going to show you here is how do you deal with the moment of inertia of an object with a hole? Because this is all this is. Uh, this is really a cylinder with a hole inside, and that's how you form the ring, okay? Uh, one thing I want you to remember is that um, this is probably something you've seen in class, uh, but the moment of inertia of an object or just a cylinder is given down over here, okay? So this is the cylinder value. It's simply one half m r squared. And m is the total mass of the cylinder, r is the radius. Okay, so let's assume that we're able to use this. So how do you construct a ring? Well, you construct a ring like this, the one shown on the left, by making a big cylinder like what I've said before, which would have a radius r2, no hole, right? 
And what you would do is you would take away a small cylinder. It would have the same height and it would have a smaller radius. All right, so that means that actually you can write this, the moment of inertia of the ring, which is really what we're trying to find, would then be the moment of inertia of the big cylinder. I'll just call it BC minus the moment of inertia of the small cylinder, okay, SC, okay? All right, and this is really easy to evaluate. Now, what you have to be careful of is you need to know the mass of each one. So that is where it's a little bit tricky, but we're just going to apply our definition for the big cylinder. So here I would write one half. It's now the mass of the big cylinder, okay? Multiplied by the radius. What's the radius of the big cylinder? It's simply R2 squared. All right, it's pretty easy. What about the small cylinder? Well, you'd say one half. It's the mass of the small cylinder multiplied by its radius squared. All right, now the only thing you have to do to simplify this is we need to somehow eliminate what is the mass of the big cylinder and what is the mass of the small cylinder. What I will do for that is I will use my volume definition, okay? And I will use the density because all of these objects here, the small and the big, have the same density, right? Same density everywhere. Same density as the ring, okay? So remember, the... If the density is mass divided by the volume, that means the mass of any object, you could write as the density multiplied by its volume. So let's go ahead and work with our equation over here. So we're gonna have one half. Let's replace the mass of the big cylinder. It's going to be the density, so whatever density of the material it's made from. And what is the volume of this guy? The volume of this big cylinder Again, it's just the area multiplied by the height. So it'd be pi r2 squared multiplied by the height. All right, that is simply what the mass is right here. You still need to multiply by r2 squared. All right, minus one half. Here's the density multiplied by the volume of the small cylinder. It's pi r1 squared multiplied by the height, okay? Let me just make some arrows here so we understand that's this guy and this is this guy. And we can't forget the last term over here. This is the R1, R1 squared. All right, there's a lot of terms we can kind of group together now. Let's take out all the common terms, right? Notice we have quite a lot of common terms over here. First of all, we have the one half. All right, we're going to have our density. We have pi. We have height. That's in both terms. And then, well, that's it. Now let's make one bracket. If I multiply both of these terms, you see you're gonna have R2 to the fourth power, that looks familiar, minus R1 to the fourth power. All right, this is the moment of inertia of the ring. Now if I take this the last final step, I'm gonna have my one half. Uh, let's put the pi and the H right here. I'm gonna open up a bracket, and I'm gonna simply move my density. This is the definition. All right, this is the mass of the ring. So we have mass of the ring divided by pi. Again, R2 squared minus R1 squared multiplied by the height. That's the density. And then you're left with uh, this bracket over here. R2 to the fourth power minus R1 to the fourth power. Actually, at this point, uh, really, this equation is the exact same equation that I had on the previous page. Um, I'm just kind of filling in some of the mathematical uh, steps over here. So let's go ahead and start canceling some things. My pi's cancel out, the h's cancel out. Uh, you're left with mass of the ring over two. Uh, look right here, now you have, it looks like similar terms, but we just dealt with what this term was. This one, you were able to write it as a difference of squares. So let's finish this off. So the ring is equal to one half mass of the ring. Uh, if I write this out as a difference of squares, again, you're going to get the same thing, right? R2 squared minus R1 squared and R2 squared plus R1 squared. Still dividing by this term, which is the exact same as this one. R2 squared minus R1 squared. You see you can cancel out both of those. Divide through, and what you're left with now is, look what we have left. The final expression for 
is one half the mass of the ring and multiplied by this uh, fraction term right here. Oh, let's go ahead and just kind of clean this up. Let's get rid of this ninja over here for a second. Oops, having a little bit of trouble here. Let's go ahead and get rid of this guy. Give us some space. And the final expression, we will get to it, I promise, is, switch the marker, R2 squared plus R1 squared. All right, this is the exact same expression that we had on the previous page, whether you find it by integration or whether you find it using the technique of an object with a hole. Okay. An object with a hole, you can always write it as a full object minus the hole that you are removing. And at the end, we're going to get the same answer. All right, hopefully that makes sense to you. Thanks for watching, folks.